everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and today we continue the coverage for Darkest Dungeon, the board game from Mythic Games. If you haven't checked out my prior videos, a link will be up to the entire showcase in the top right hand corner. But today we focus on the Hamlet phase, and inside this video, I'll show you how to set the Hamlet up, and also we'll walk through, well, of course, replenishing our party after losing the Plague Doctor in the prior video, and also show you all the different aspects of what you can expect to do inside the Hamlet. In order to set up the Hamlet, you'll need the Hamlet board, which I've already placed here. I've also gone ahead, taken the Hamlet event cards, shuffled them up, and placed them nearby. You're going to also want to find the caretaker token or miniature and place it near the game board as well. Then take a look at the Hamlet board, find the stagecoach area here, and it states to place two waiting hero tokens right here. The game includes a number of upgraded building tiles. You're going to be able to level up buildings in the Hamlet. They're going to go from Roman numeral one, as you can see on a number of these, to three and two in different levels all the way up as you pay the associated cost for them, giving you additional benefits at each of the different locations. You can keep these tiles nearby. You're not going to need them right out of the gates. It's worth mentioning that you can absolutely set this up earlier on. You can do it the second that you start setting up for the entire game and just have it sitting off to the side. Or you can do what I did and just wait until you move into your very first Hamlet phase and set it up at that point in time. Regardless of how successful your dive into the depths was, after a quest is over, the heroes have to return back to the Hamlet, lick their wounds, before they face the horrors again. And when you're returning to the Hamlet, there's a number of steps you need to go through. The first one is to shuffle back into the respective decks all the discarded trinkets, curios, quirks, diseases, room cards, and loot chests. And then all conditions are removed and the light goes back up to five. Now for our adventure, we never had the light go down because I did a pretty good job of keeping that up and we didn't get impacted by that too badly. So that's going to stay exactly where it is. Card wise, I just rhymed off all the ones that will return back to their respective decks. Next up, all equipped trinkets are turned to their positive side at this point. And then the next step is that afflictions and virtues are reshuffled into their decks and are replaced by negative and positive quirks respectively. So basically, no life or stress is recovered, no quirks or diseases are removed, Heroes need to heal themselves by visiting the buildings of the Hamlet to do that. Now you might have some remaining provisions after your journey like I did. I gained this one quite late in the game so I do have some food. So I can choose right now to consume them to gain their benefits. So I could take a look at say the Hellion who has 7 damage. Might want to add or maybe take away one of those damage by consuming some food. So I'll go ahead and do that. The provision die is consumed and 1 damage is going to come off the Hellion. Now any unused provisions that you choose not to use, they get returned to the supply and they each actually provide one gold. So if you get in a situation where you really didn't need as many provisions as you had, you can actually cash them in or sell them essentially for some gold pieces. At this point, if you want, you can choose to save the game. You'll do it by using this pad right here. There is a ton of pages within this pad, but you are able to use just one of them in order to capture what you've done to date. And then of course you can stow this away as well as the game, come back to it later, or you can even leave it on the table and just write the things down you don't want to forget, keeping track of everything around your party and its progress through the campaign. Or you can say, forget that, I want to dive right back in. Just to add to what you can do around saving, you do have a save box that comes inside of the game basically just a box that allows you to place items inside of it to keep it separate from mixing in with all the other components so that it makes it easier for setup if you have to tear the game down and bring it back up again in the future. Now the Hamlet is essentially the hub where you're going to rest, shop, train, and help the heir to slowly restore it back to its former glory. Heroes return to the Hamlet after each dungeon delve, which you just saw one take place. At this point, we actually draw a card from the Hamlet event deck that we put together earlier. When you draw a Hamlet card, you simply just reference the card itself in terms of its instructions to see what you do next. In the top left-hand corner, it will indicate the number of days you get to have at the Hamlet before your next quest begins. So that is going to be moved onto the Hamlet board using a token or marker and we're going to place it on the second day position. Now if you're wondering where this token is, it's simply the opposite side of the light track marker. It's important to keep note of the fact that you can get cards out of this Hamlet event deck that are actually used once and then discarded from the campaign never to come back again. So the majority of them will be shuffled back into the event deck, but there are a handful of them which will never come back. This event card states, Supply Run. Tis not only the heroes, but the common folk too that offer up anything they can for Hamlet's common good. The party's going to gain plus two provision dice before their next quest, so that's certainly going to help us out out of the gates. 
Now let's talk about the next step we do within the Hamlet phase, and that is rolling for the caretaker. This suspicious looking person took care of the Hamlet before the heir arrived and continues to do so during his temporary absence. So at the start of each day, you're gonna roll a 10-sided die with this individual and place him on top of the appropriate building. He occupies that space and basically blocks the heroes from visiting there. If you need to roll for something else that blocks the location as well, such as a boss's threat ability, and you roll the same location as the caretaker, you just roll again until you roll a free building. So there are multiple ways in which the Hamlet can be blocked, which can be kind of painful if you're looking for specific things inside the Hamlet. So let's roll our 10-sided die for the caretaker. You'll see underneath each of these different areas of the Hamlet, you have some numbers, one to two, three, four, five, the odds basically of hitting that particular location. Let's see where the caretaker is gonna go and block right now. One, it's gonna block right off the bat the survivalist area. Now, just before we dig into how we spend a given day, and we have two of them with the party, we need to have a full party of four, of course. Now, back in part number two, when the Plague Doctor was taken down, we, at that point, would have come to the Hamlet board here, taken a look at the stagecoach area, and if there was any of these hero tokens, we would take one and discard it in order to bring a new hero into play. Timing as to how you bring that individual into play, whether you died in an exploration or in a battle, is mentioned on page 31, so definitely check that out for timing. In terms of getting them back in but regardless it still would happen before we came into this hamlet phase so in other words as of right now i'd already have my four party established so the fourth person i'm bringing back i'm bringing in or i should say the new person i'm bringing in is going to be the highwayman i'm not going to actually build out the highwayman's loadout as i just need as many to move through with the hamlet he's also not going to gain any xp because he died before we had ever made it to the hamlet and only at that point when you first make it to the hamlet can you cash in the XP that you gained through your quest and duplicated at the stagecoach. This will give you a benefit in the future when a hero dies because the hero now starts at a higher level of XP. So from this point onwards, if we have any more hero deaths, they're going to come in at a higher point of XP, which will be much more beneficial for the party. Heroes that get the benefit of XP being at the stagecoach have to remember also you don't discard the XP when you gain it. So if another hero was to die on me and gain this two XP, you don't take these two tokens away. This pool will just continue to grow every time you come back to the Hamlet with more and more XP, ensuring that future heroes come in at the appropriate level. You also get two upgrades to your hero and or your skills as if you had first visited the guild in the Hamlet without spending any gold. So how are you going to spend your days inside the Hamlet? Well, you're going to do it in stance order from aggressive to support. The heroes are going to visit various buildings of the Hamlet. You get to spend money. You get to heal yourself physically and mentally, of course, from all the horrors that you've experienced in the dungeon, training your skills up, curing diseases. And each hero that occupies a building during the visit blocks other heroes from visiting it, including the caretaker, of course, as we've already talked about. But this keeps you from farming the same benefit over and over and over again, which makes a lot of logical sense. And the other thing to mention is that once all the heroes have spent their days there you move the day counter one day and you just repeat these steps again you roll for the caretaker and then you go through another full day so you're not going to be able to do everything you want to do in every situation but the more days you're in the hamlet the more opportunity you have to do so just before we commence our very first day, let's talk about the Hamlet buildings and upgrades and how you can actually use the money that you've gained inside of your quest in order to try and upgrade the Hamlet to give you more benefits. If you're playing solo, you get this choice alone. If you're playing with others, you all have to agree on how the money is spent. And it's worth mentioning the cost to upgrade a building from one level is 20 gold, except for the blacksmith and the nomad wagon, which are 10 gold and the guild and graveyard cannot be upgraded. Now let's go around the Hamlet and talk about all the different locations you can interact with and even the ones you can't technically with your party members. One of them being the stagecoach, which we talked about earlier. And the only thing I really want to note around this that I haven't covered already is the fact that if we level this thing up to level two, you get to add another waiting hero token. If you get it to level three, you add another token on top of that. So in my case where I lost an individual after the first quest, trying to level this up could give me the availability to lose more heroes in the future and get further into the campaign. So that's an angle to think about. Let's go ahead and talk about the survivalist spot, even though we can't go there because the caretaker has blocked us, but this would have allowed us to gain a provision die for one gold at level one. Getting to level two, you get to gain a provision die for one gold or gain two provision dice for three gold. And at level three, you gain a provision die or for two gold, gain two provision dice or for four gold, gain three provision dice. 
So here's an example of what the level three would look like. There's also a level two as well. I'm just gonna show the highest tier as you build up on top of the Hamlet. The Tavern at level 1 allows you to recover 3 stress for 1 gold or 6 stress for 3 gold. At level 2, you get those exact same two options or you can recover 9 stress for 9 gold. And at the highest tier 3, you get all three of those prior options or a heal 5 for 1 gold or a heal 10 for 3 gold or remove a disease for 2 gold. Next, we have the Sanitarium. At level one, you get to heal five for one gold or heal 10 for three gold or remove a disease for two gold. The second level allows you to heal for seven for one gold or heal 14 for three gold or remove a disease for two gold. And the final level allows you to heal for nine for one gold, heal 18 for three gold or remove a disease for two gold. The Abbey at level 1 allows you to remove one quirk for two gold or remove two quirks for five gold. At level 2 you can remove one quirk for two gold or remove two quirks for five or gain a positive quirk for three. At the final level you can remove one quirk for one gold or remove two quirks for four gold or gain a positive quirk for three gold or recover three stress for one gold or recover six stress for three gold. Lots of options here. The graveyard is a location that you cannot upgrade. Here you can pray for the losses of your fallen comrades, we have one now, and swear vengeance to bolster the hero's will and gain a virtue. And you gotta be careful though because this means the next time the hero's stress reaches 10, they're dead. The guild cannot be upgraded, and during your visit, you can make up to two of the following upgrades to your hero. You can spend four XP and two gold to level up the hero by one, or you can spend two XP and one gold to level up one of the hero's skills by one. And you remove the old version permanently from the game. The blacksmith at level one can be upgraded, and the first level allows you to pay one gold and use one of the hero's skills as its level two form for the next quest only. Level two allows you to pay a gold and use one of your hero's skills as its level three form for the next quest only. And then level three, the top tier, allows you to pay one gold to gain one provision dice and use one of your hero's skills as its level three form for the next quest only. When you use the blacksmith services, you get to keep the old card to the side as it will replace the temporarily upgraded one once the quest is over. At the very bottom of the Hamlet board here, we have the Nomad Wagon. The first day a hero visits this location, you draw and reveal three level one trinkets. You leave them here to the end of the Hamlet phase, and then you reshuffle them back into the deck when the heroes leave on their next quest. A hero visiting the Nomad Wagon can sell one of their equipped trinkets and buy one from the available trinkets at the following prices I'm about to list off. You can buy a level one trinket for four gold. You can sell a level one trinket for two gold. You can sell a level two trinket for three gold, or sell a level three trinket for four gold and the selling prices are the same for all Nomad Wagon levels. When the Nomad Wagon hits level two, you can then place two level one and one level two trinkets, and level two trinkets cost six to buy. Once you hit the third level, which you can see on screen here, you can place one trinket of each level, and level three trinkets cost eight to buy. Now, earlier when I was talking about the stagecoach, I didn't show you that, yes, you do have a tile as well, which will upgrade to level two. And then to this one here, level three, I'm gonna go ahead and place all these tiles at their highest tier on the board right now to give an idea as to how the Hamlet will change based on the level increase. Here is a look at the Hamlet board from level one, jumping to level three. Now we're not even looking at level two, which happens in between. The artwork also shows progression from one to two and two to three. You can really see it actually changing and becoming much more structured and sound like it used to be versus the ruin that it was left in. But yes, it's a very cool visual aspect to be able to build this back up, very similar to the video game. As a party, I'm gonna to decide to spend 20 gold in order to upgrade the sanitarium to the second level. Now my thought process around this is to make it even more efficient to spend gold in order to get healing. When I have two characters coming out of the dungeon with quite a bit of wounds, the Vestal and the Hellion, it would be nice to be able to maybe spend the remaining two gold that I have, one apiece, to be able to do some healing, one each on each day. Because remember again, I can't put both those heroes in the same spot on the same day, but I'm there for two days, so I could spread that out and get both those characters back to full health. 
So we'll start off day number one with the Hellion in the aggressive slot here. There's a number of things I could do that are on the Hamlet board as I've talked about already, but there's also the ability to use a Hamlet skill specific to a hero on their player board. As you can see at the bottom of the card here, it states Hamlet skill, sharpen spear, which would give us a boost, a little buff for five turns, or we can intimidate. We can actually remove the caretaker from play. So you wanna keep an eye on these kind of things because each individual character will bring in their own unique actions that you can actually do during your day in the Hamlet. The Hellion's going to spend the day heading to the newly upgraded Sanitarium, and this level 2 is going to give a heal of 7 for 1 gold, which is awesome. It's more than enough in order to deal with the Hellion's wounds. Just like that, the 1 gold is paid. The wounds have come off the Hellion. The Jester's Hamlet skill, which could be used, is every rose has its thorn. A hero can go ahead and remove two stress per negative quirk and disease. The Jester decided to go to the graveyard in order to gain a virtue for the next quest. Flipping it over, we have Photomania. This one is when the light goes up, you get to recover one stress. With the Vestal up next, we've got two options on the player card if we want to use them, or we could use something inside the Hamlet itself. The Hamlet skill at the very top is Prey, so for self, you get a minus 9 to your stress. You get a debuff for six turns. That's that option if you really need to keep yourself away from being completely stressed out. And then you have Chant down below, which actually impacts every single hero in the party. You'll see the four icons for each of the hero individual icons mentioned. And then it says minus one, to your stress so everybody loses stress which actually isn't a bad thing seeing as everyone has at least one to get rid of and then I'm going to end up buffing myself for three turns so I'm going to go ahead and do a chant so everybody just got a little less stressed and the Vestal has been buffed up as well the Highwayman is next, and of course, I haven't done much with this Highwayman as I haven't completely set it up, as we're just really reviewing the Hamlet phase here, but I'll show you the skill that he has. It's called Clean Guns, so I can actually buff myself up with a stack of six tokens. And that's exactly what the Highwayman is going to choose to do. That is going to wrap up the very first day in the Hamlet. At this point, the Day Tracker will drop from two down to one, and all the miniatures are returned back to their player boards. We now roll again to find out where the caretaker is going to go this time. And based on this roll, it's going to be a five. That is going to place him up here at the Abbey. The Hellion begins the day and chooses to sharpen her spear, so giving herself five buff tokens. If you're wondering what the buff does, as long as the character is buffed, their skills are going to gain a plus one to crit per stack. So this is going to just give them the ability to hit bigger when they do start making those attack rolls. The Vestal has five damage, so it makes a lot of sense to head her to our upgraded building, which we did this time around. And we're going to spend our last gold, which is obviously limiting our options here because a lot of this other stuff costs gold, and we spent 20 to upgrade. But still, I think this is wise as it gets rid of all of the damage that we have on the Vestal. Uh, it's a higher heal than we need, but it's still decent. Now, I have no gold in order to purchase anything, but I will show you what the Nomad Wagon's all about. We're going to reveal three level one trinkets, so at least you can see what these things look like. The Jester's gone ahead and pulled up three cards off the level one trinket deck. You can see level one on the back of the trinket deck itself that you've created earlier in setup. You can also see it right here. There's positive and negative sides to these cards, so be aware of that. I'm going to show you the positive sides because that's the happy place. Uh, we've got Bleed Charm, Damage Stone, and Stun Charm. These are the positive effects. So when you would hit with a skill, inflict an additional two bleed for two turns. Pretty good. Damage Stone gives you an additional three damage on top of your hit for wounds. Awesome. Always good. Helps you maybe get over that edge to be able to just take out an enemy instead of wounding it only halfway or partway stun charm is going to allow you with a hit of a skill uh when you flick a hit with a skill you get an additional stun on top of it stunning is awesome really messes with the monsters and stops them from doing anything on their next activation which is great uh so these particular level one trinkets are going to cost you four gold you also have the ability as a hero here when you choose to go here during the day to sell any trinkets you have so if you have trinkets you want to get rid of there is associating uh buy prices back that'll give you coins which will certainly help you to be able to purchase more things or maybe do things elsewhere on the Hamlet board itself. Now, if I was continuing on with another quest, I would certainly be picking something else for the Jester to be a little more productive. I just kind of wanted to show you those trinkets and how that operates. Up in the top right-hand corner, the Highwayman, which is the last individual to activate, is going to come in and go after a Virtue from the Graveyard. 
So the Highwayman has prayed for his fallen comrades and ended up getting focused. At the start of your turn, we're going to roll a die. If it's a 1 to a 5, I get to inflict a self buff, which is awesome. Now again, remember that if you are taking these virtues, you have to be careful because the next time your hero stress reaches 10, they're dead. So it does create that interesting balance of uh, being a little bit more powerful at a risk. So keep that in mind. At this point in time, our days in the Hamlet are are over and we are ready to go back out into a quest so at this point we take the quest deck and we would draw two cards out and choose our quest very similar to what we did in the setup video as you'll remember we got ourselves a hamlet event card which told us we get two provision dice before the next quest which means i should have likely rolled those earlier so that was a goof on my part in terms of using those dice correctly basically on that particular card you're not going to necessarily add it into the next quest you're going into you're going to roll them immediately and use it within your Hamlet phase to your benefit. So we'll go ahead and do that now. We'll see what we can get out of it. So rolling these dice off, we got a DD, which is actually really good because that is going to allow us to choose something at random. And actually looking at my characters, I have a Hellion who could really get rid of some Blight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a Potion. And that potion will allow me to remove the blight, which is awesome. And this bandage here will allow me to heal. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do one heal here on the jester. And that will deal with the damage, or on the bandages, I should say. And then, of course, the potion is going to help me get rid of all of the blight off the hellion. So now we would be going in with absolutely nothing to worry about in terms of wounds or any conditions that are still in play. So just remember that if you happen to see a card come through the event deck that states you get it before the next quest, make sure you utilize it really early on. Like right away, roll for that because that could impact your choices inside the Hamlet as well. And that, my friends, is going to wrap up the Hamlet phase video for Darkest Dungeon from Mythic Games. You not only got to solve what the Hamlet board can do for you in terms of not only its level 1, 2, and 3 stages of benefits, but also that your heroes themselves also have skills. You have the Hamlet event that can throw cards at you, which can be positive. You have trinkets to go after. You have money to manage, XP that you can spend. So a lot of cool things are happening in that in-between state between diving into the next quest or next imminent threat or next next boss that you're going up against and that actually leads me into another whole part of the game which I'm not going to cover inside of this showcase currently maybe I'll come back around and we'll do some type of a boss fight in the future but as of right now I'm going to wrap things up right here now there is more to see inside of Darkest Dungeon that what you've seen inside the showcase is just scratching the surface because we've only gone through a single quest so there are boss battles as I mentioned there's the Darkest Dungeon which doesn't appear until the fourth act so you have to be able to survive through multiple acts in order to even get to that darkest dungeon act and then things really are ramping up you've got the final encounter happening there where you have different forms it, like just just all kinds of other great stuff you'll find a lot of that information on pages 35 to about 38 inside the rulebook which mythic games actually recently released digitally i believe so you can go actually check it out yourself to read that and find out kind of how that end game operates and is structured but rather than spoil any of that I'm going to leave that for you to work yourself towards to find out for yourself how cool that aspect really is thank you guys so much for watching really hope you enjoyed the showcase this was a blast to recover and kind of bring the videos back up to the production level of uh, standard in terms of the final components of this game versus the prototype ones that were originally shown thank you guys so much for your support really enjoyed doing this and as always keep on rolling solo